All right, guys, what is up? Welcome back to the Tackle Rat. And today I'm gonna be showing you guys um, just kind of the stuff that I ordered as far as line, uh, tackle, and hooks, all that kind of stuff. And what I ordered for my Northern Swing. So I'm first gonna be headed to St. Clair for BFL. I'm gonna be picking up my truck there too. And then I'm gonna be headed to Champlain in a couple weeks after that. And then after that, I'm gonna try to go to the St. Lawrence, um, depending on how I'm doing on points. But yeah, fishing for big smallmouth. And kind of wanted to just show you guys what I am ordering. Uh, I already unboxed and everything, so, um, but I'm gonna kind of just run through stuff that I bought. So here, we got all the plastics that I bought. So as you can see, when you're going up north, this is essential right here. This ain't no secret, but the purple bag, also known as Max Scent, definitely gonna wanna have with you. Um, so I ordered flatworms, uh, you know, they have minnows, minnow baits as well. Um, I got a ton of different colors. So now they, this year, last year they didn't have that new size, but now they have four and a quarter inch and then they have a 3.6 inch size. And uh, I think the four and a quarter is gonna play a lot because um, up north, even as a co-angler, you're, you're still fishing for, you know, those bigger bites. And uh, that would kind of weed out, you know, a lot of a lot of the smaller fish. But we'll see how that we'll see that how that one uh, works out. And they got a couple different new colors. So we got Gobiashi, pretty nice little Gobi imitation there. Um, we got Smelt, something I have not thrown yet. And a lot of different colors because last year uh, it was really hard to get your hands on like flatworms and stuff. And now they got a, a lot of different colors in stock. And uh, I was able to kind of stock up, as you can see on the max and stuff and i'm gonna have a lot of different options this is when i'm going up there this year um what else so we got some just some little jig trailers uh throwing a little compact jig up there sometimes if you're a largemouth fishing a little bit same deal here a little small beavers um and then really the only other plastic that i'm bringing uh the thing with maxent you don't have translucent colors i think it's just like with how the plastic is made they really can't do translucent colors so you know, when you get that high sun, um, like a translucent color like this. I threw TRDs last year, um, and then I've seen several guys do well on these baits right here, so I decided to give them a shot. And then uh, the other bait that I do throw a little bit is the uh, Z2, so it's a, Z -Man, it's a striking bait, but it has the Z-Man plastic, or the Z-Man elastic on there. So uh, it's gonna stretch out a lot, it's going to be buoyant, which is the most important thing, and it's gonna, you know, stay um, stay horizontal there in the water column when you're fishing them. And then I've also got some some bigger profiles that I want to try. Uh, so that that was the baby Z2. These are like the large versions, like essentially a soft plastic jerk bait. But I want to try this on a drop shot. I mean, uh, a lot of those perch, those smallmouth are eating are around this size. Um, you got alewives up there, smelt, uh, big gobies. This is definitely a great goby imitator, this color right here. So I'm gonna give it a try. I think I think it will. I think it will catch them up there, but um, yeah, that's pretty much as that's pretty much all I got for plastics. I mean, real basic, just a ton of flatworms, ton of flatworms, and then uh, coming over to like my tackle and like hard baits and stuff. So uh, first, first stop St. Clair. Uh, if you guys have never fished there, um, I mean, I haven't. I'm gonna be going up there on no practice, but just for my research, you know, look at. And a map of St. Clair, it's like completely flat. And what you're fishing are like these one to two foot drops, which is not a lot. I mean, it is a lot there, but that's really not a lot. And um, it's pretty much the same depth across the whole lake. And a big thing that they do there is crank. So these fish, you know, there's no really not a lot of rock piles or structure or anything. And they kind of just roam around. And a great way to catch them is just is power fishing and cranking. So I've never done it before for smallmouth, but I got some DT10s, DT14s. Um, in like a perch pattern and then I got like a shad little shad deal here too. And I'll just show you guys all of them Bought up bought up a couple and uh, gonna probably throw that around a little bit if the conditions get right um, You know when it gets real windy out there on st. Clair sometimes that's about all you can do is crank so um, That will definitely give that a shot and then uh, in the river and then at Champlain too um, when you're fishing for largemouth or like any kind of structure on the bank, a compact jig like this, it's a little Kitek flipping jig that I use sometimes. Uh, it's a real light wire hook, and it's kind of like um, I mean you can put it in heavy stuff, but the hook, the hook is not 
the best, but it's a great jig, great compact profile, and I love throwing it up like up north around those areas. And then I ordered a ton of uh, line. So we got shooter, Sunline shooter. Um, I normally do not spend this much money on line because if you guys know shooter, it's pretty expensive, but um, definitely worth the money when you're going up north. So the seven pound shooter is kind of like my main go-to uh, as far as braid to fluoro when I'm drop shotting for smallmouth. Um, used a ton of it last year. Fish in the St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence is a super snaggy place. And, uh, you know, I did not have a lot of problems with uh, breaking off and stuff. Just got to have your drag set right, uh, and you will be fine with that with that uh, pound test. And then I also ordered eight pound braid. So a uh, key with braid, as you can see, we got flash green. So as long as you're using a fluorocarbon leader, you're going to be fine. Um, but what this does is it allows me to kind of visually watch that line in the water, helps detect bites and um, the braid just helps you cast way farther. You have no, little to no stretch uh, when you're running a braid to floor or leader. And the eight pound, you guys might think that's super light. You know, I, there's a lot of pros who are running 12 to 15 to like an eight pound leader. But what that eight pound braid does is it gives you a lot more sensitivity than it does with those thicker diameter lines. And then what it's also gonna do is gonna allow you to cast farther. But the only thing is you just gotta be careful with, uh, you know, rubbing it against stuff. It is eight pound line. Um, and it can break fairly easily. So just be careful with that. But uh, yeah, definitely great to have. Um, I like the eight for like when you're throwing hair jigs, spy baits and stuff that like, especially the hair jigs, you know, cause they're super light. And uh, sometimes you might be casting them around the wind and stuff like that. So I just like to keep it light and having that light line, it's risky, but it does allow you to cast a lot farther with those light baits. And then uh, the other one I got here is 10 pound shooter. So for jerk baits, this is awesome. Uh, I caught them the first day on the St. Lawrence. I caught several key fish on a jerk bait. And uh, as you guys can see in those videos, um, you know, it handled it great. Those big, big small mouth power diving and heavy current and uh, never had a problem with this break in. And the key thing is, this is a very supple line. So uh, when you're casting jerk bait, yeah. You do not want a lot of curl in that line. It's gonna uh, affect the action of the jerk bait, especially if it's real cold water and those fish uh, need to see that bait, you know, suspending perfectly in the water. That curled line is really gonna uh, mess up the action of the jerk bait. But um, you know, this is is very supple line, stays straight, doesn't curl up, um, and yeah, definitely definitely worth the money for like that kind of finesse jerk bait fishing deal. Um, what else we got here? Uh, yeah, split shot, drop shot hooks. So ordered two, four 25 packs of drop shot hooks. I mean, you burning through them there, uh, whether it's snagging, um, just retying. So I ordered a bunch of hooks, size two and size four. I like to run size four for the uh, uh, 3.6 flatworm and then um, two for like pretty much any, any bigger, anything bigger than that. I also got some two big old spools of Sunline, 16 and 20. Um, I kind of just started using Sunline. I playing around with it. It's real, real thin. I found it's real thin diameter line compared to what I used to use. Um, so I kind of upsized it a little bit, but yeah, I do like this line so far. It's, it's affordable and yeah. But honestly guys, that is literally all I'm out here throwing. Real basic, especially as a co-angler. And if you're coming up on no practice, uh, that is the way to go. Just research like what, you know, those lakes are known for, like what guys are catching them on in those top tens, top fives in those tournaments, and definitely just go and order a ton of that stuff. But yeah, stick to your confidence, confidence baits, and that's, that's how you get it done up north for sure. So yeah, just want to run through kind of what I was uh, ordering for this, these next couple of events, and hopefully we'll have some good recap videos, some good content over on Carter Wichenko Fishing. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next episode of The Tackle Rack.